Hello and welcome to this uh, digital photography courses.co.uk Photoshop tutorial. In this lesson we're going to be looking at using levels and curves to make basic adjustments to an image. So let's get started. So here we have a photograph which I took uh, last year down in Cornwall and as sometimes happens um, the pitch doesn't really do the day justice. It was a beautiful day and there was a lovely sky and with the rushing water and the bird scene, it really, really was a nice scene. Uh, and we've got sort of the chimneys and tin mines there as well. So, um, as you can see, this picture is probably, might be a tiny bit overexposed, but as you can see, the sort of sky is completely burnt out and it's very flat. I did actually take another photograph at two stop less exposure uh, because I wanted to get the sky in, and I suppose I had ideas about uh, bringing the sky up later. So on this shot here, you can see the sky is quite nice, but obviously everything else is quite dark. Now on digital photography, it's actually a lot easier to recover detail from the shadows than it is from the highlights. If you overexpose an image, then basically the background will just sort of white out and you will not be able to get um, any detail back into that. So what we're going to do is we'll minimise this image here and we'll work on the darker image. As I say, we're going to be using something called levels, and then we're also going to have a go with curves to see which does the best job. So to get to the levels palette, we need to go up to image, adjustment, and levels. And as you can see, the shortcut is Control and L. There we go. Now that brings up this um, this palette here. If I just make the picture in the background a bit smaller, there we go. We can see both now. And what I kind of refer to this is as a range of mountains. And if you think of the range of mountains, they represent the tones in the photograph. So if we look at the bottom here, we've got the output levels. This is black and this is white. And just to give you a clue as well, you've got a black triangle here and a white triangle here. Now, if probably the first thing you want to do, if you haven't got a full range of tones in the picture, then it will fall short either to the left or to the right. Probably the first thing to try is just try hitting auto. Occasionally that will do everything you need it to do, but as you can see on this photograph it really hasn't made a great deal of difference. What we can do then is if we use the left hand slider, the black dark slider, then move that to the right, the picture will get darker. If you take the left hand slider, the white slider, and you move that forward, the picture will get brighter, as we can see they're brighter and more contrasty, but what's actually happened is we've lost the sky completely. Then the centre slider really just brings up the mid-tones, which has really sort of kept a bit of sky, but as you can see, the pitch has gone very flat indeed. So it would take quite a little bit of work tweaking these sliders uh, to get an acceptable image on this. And realistically, you know, what actually happens is we, we get the land right, we lose the sky. So using levels, it's not really going to work on this one. So what we'll do is we're going to try and use curves instead. Now, just while we're in this box, if you press cancel, the box will disappear and you can start all over again. The alternative to pressing cancel is you can press down the Alt key on your keyboard and the cancel button will change to a reset button. If you then press the reset, it will take the picture back to its original as before you made any changes. So let's come out of this box, so we'll just click cancel and now we're going to try the same picture but we're going to try using curves instead okay so to get to the um, curves dialog box it's image adjustments and curves and as you can see the shortcut is control and m and that will bring up a completely different dialog box now at first sight this is a little bit daunting i think because it doesn't really tell you anything but let me show you how it works. First of all, this diagonal line again represents the tones in the picture. If you click anywhere in the frame, you will see a corresponding to uh, dot on this line which represents the tones in the picture. So as you can see, that's a shadow area. If I go up into the cloud, that's more of a highlight area. And if I go into the middle, there you go, that's sort of these are the mid tones. Okay. 
what we can actually see, even if I go to the brightest point, you can actually see there aren't any whites in this picture. So the first thing to do with, uh, with curves is just, as before, just try it in auto. Occasionally it will do the job. And as you can see here, it has brightened the picture. But we've also lost a little bit of detail in the clouds. If we go to the center portion here, this is the equivalent of your mid-tone slider and push upwards. We've actually seen the image gets brighter, but unlike levels, it does a much better job of keeping the contrast in the photograph. But as before, we are losing the clouds a little bit in the background. Now, one of the nice things of curves is we can actually just work on certain tonal ranges within the photograph. So if I just reset this, so that's the, pressing the Alt button down on the keyboard and press Reset, go back to the original picture. What I can actually do is I can actually lock the sky in place so we don't affect the sky too much. And the way to do that is to take a read from the sky and notice where it appears on the actual graph just here on the line. And then click at that point. Just click once and what it will do is put a dot in place. That area now is now locked. If we now go back to the center and push upwards, what will happen is we will increase the light in the center of the photograph, or that is the mid-tones, but without really affecting the sky. Now, as before, that's made the picture quite sort of a little bit gray, flat looking. So again, what we can do is we can do the opposite and we can work in the shadows. So we've just pick a shadow area, sort of down here. And what we can do is by just doing the same, we can pull down the shadows and start to add a little bit of contrast to the picture. Now this does take a little bit of tweaking. But the nice thing is, have a little play around and see how you get on. You can actually get quite interesting sort of pictures. There we go. So it's a bit of an S shape tends to give added contrast. And you can actually get something quite uh, good. If, you, if you're not happy with it or you just want to see how it looks like before, you've got a preview box down here. Just put the preview box on and off, and that'll give you an idea how the photograph is going to look. And remember, at any time, you can always press the Alt button down and then click Reset and just have another go again. Or the alternative is you can click on one of these uh, dots and just drag it off the frame, and that will allow you to have another little play. So, there we go. so what we'll do is just lock the gentle S curve and we'll just take the center up. Probably a bit too contrasty there. But as you can see, we can start to get a reasonable photograph out of this. <laughs> Seems like the more you mess around with it, the worse it gets. I'm just going to reset that and start again, I think. So we'll lock the sky into place. There we go, just lock the sky into place. Bring up, the, bring up the center portions and just take the contrast down a bit. There we go. Okay. So that concludes the first lesson, which is levels and curves. Uh, in the next section, what we're looking at is using what's called adjustment layers. Now, adjustment layers are very, very powerful, and they're my recommended way of actually making adjustments because they're non destructive. So hopefully I'll see you again in a few minutes while you're looking at the adjustment layers. Thank you for watching.